Hi, today you're going to learn all the things listed on screen. So you've made this really cool grain simulation in Houdini and you want to render it in Unreal. What do you do? Make sure that you've cached out your simulation so the exporter only has to read it from your file cache. Make sure that at the end of your chain you have a rub that you can find. Then go to your out context and drop down a labs Niagara rub. This is where we'll export our simulation from. You need to select your sub to export. This is the null that we put at the end of our chain. In my case, out Niagara, an output path, and it'll export as an hbjson. This is the file you'll import into Unreal Engine. Then pay attention to this keep attributes. These are the attributes that Unreal Engine will use to interpret your particle simulation. By default, particle simulations have all the attributes that you need. So just make sure that you don't delete something like the velocity. In my case, I have a grain simulation. So the P scale is absolutely necessary because this is how we're going to tell Unreal Engine what size our grains need to be. I've put down a copy to points here to visualize what we want. This sphere has a radius of 0.5 and we actually need a radius one. What you could do is drop down an FBX ROP here and output your sphere, your custom sphere, and then import that into to Unreal Engine, we're going to use a default Unreal Engine sphere instead. The simulation takes a very long time to export. You need to make sure that all of your attributes are what you want them to be. I'm going to make sure that my color is a very wide range, so I have something to ramp with inside of Unreal Engine in case I find out that this is too soft while I'm rendering it. So you don't want to do something like this where you have a very small range of colors. You need to make sure that you have a very wide range of colors. Then once you're sure that you're ready to export, go to your out context again, click on the Labs Niagara ROP, press render. While your simulation is rendering, we're going to make our project. Go to the games reset. I like to choose the third person template. That way I have a mannequin that I can create my environment around to make sure that the scale is correct. You want to make sure that you've ticked on ray tracing. So that is enabled when your project starts up here. Find a project location, press create. You can go find the Houdini to Niagara plugin. You can find it through SideFX's website, which will lead you to GitHub. I will also include a link in the description. Take the latest Houdini Niagara zip file that you see, which corresponds with the version of Unreal Engine that you're using. In your Unreal project folder, where your .u project file is, make a new folder, name this folder plugins, unzip the file that you downloaded, and then enter the file. Inside the file, you'll find this Houdini Niagara folder. Copy paste that into your new plugins folder. If you had Unreal Engine open, restart it. Go to edit plugins and search for Houdini. You see this Houdini Niagara plugin? In, check this box. In this next part, we're going to set up our project settings. If you've already watched my previous video, you don't need to watch this next chapter as it's exactly the same thing. You can skip ahead to the next chapter. Before we do any fun stuff inside of Unreal, we need to do some housekeeping because Unreal is a game engine. It's not necessarily set up for our render purposes. You're going to go up here into the edit menu, go to project settings. We're going to search for a few things. Search for Lumen, which is the lighting system. We want to make sure that use hardware ray tracing when available is ticked on. Search for ray tracing. Make sure that ray traced shadows and ray traced skylight are both enabled. Search for height fog. Make sure that support sky atmosphere affecting height fog is enabled. We need to enable the plugin that allows us to render. You go to edit plugins. We search for movie render queue. Enable that. Unreal will ask you to restart. Press restart now. Reopen the project. Now we need to import our exported simulation. Create a new folder and let's name it simulation. Drag and drop your .hbjson file. The import process is done. In my case, it took around two minutes to import. Press save all. We want to set up a Niagara system which can contain the particles that we exported from Houdini. So just right click and press Niagara system. We want to create a new system from selected emitters. Uncheck library only, enable plugins, go to parent emitters. We'll find this Houdini Niagara basic. Press this little green plus button, finish. The naming convention for this is NS for Niagara system, underscore whatever name you want to give it, grains. We dive inside the new Niagara system. We get this torus. That's not what we want. Niagara is a very complex particle simulation system within Unreal Engine. We're not going to dive too deep into it. We're just going to use this preset to get a nice simulation from Houdini to Unreal 
Unreal. This is called the emitter. There are three places where you need to find this Houdini Niagara point cache asset. Select your point cache asset, which is the one I named Rains. You're going to do that three times. You see, we have something that roughly resembles our simulation, but it's not quite it. The timing is a bit weird. You can go out here and find your point cache asset and open it up. And you can see under max sample time, how long your cache is in time units. So this cache is 5.95. Let's round that up to six. Go on our emitter, go to loop duration and make sure that that's set to the same number. This means that once we get to around six seconds here on our timeline, it'll pop back and start from the beginning. So you'll notice that right now we're just rendering this white sprite and it says down here, bright render. We're going to change that in just a second. First, go to particle update, add a new module, search for scale mesh size. To ensure that the mesh we render is the correct size, go here to the scale factor and press this little arrow and go multiply vector by float. Multiply this by the Houdini p-scale, press the little arrow outside of the float field, search for p-scale. We want this one and we are good to go. So you go to sprite render, disable that, add a new render, we want a mesh renderer. Nothing is happening. That's because we need to add a mesh to our renderer. Here under meshes where it says none and search for sphere. Scroll down a little bit and go here and find the sphere. Before you click this, you need to check what the approximate size is. It has a bunch of details over here on the right side about the sphere. This one size is 320 by 320 by 320. We need the one that's 100. We're going to select the second sphere. You'll notice that these spheres are too small. They're not colliding with each other. That's because we need a sphere that has a radius twice the size of this sphere. We want to go back to our scale mesh size on this vector field, press two on all of them. Now this looks much better. Now we can see our simulation running. Isn't that cool? So press save. We're going to make a new level. So press file and new level. We want to create an empty level. In this empty scene, you can drag out your Niagara system and you can see that it is now running in your viewport in real time. Save this level to a new folder named levels. We'll name this L underscore brains. Create a sequence in order to control the timing of this simulation. Go up here to the little clipboard and add level sequence. We'll go to our folder called sequences and name this S underscore shot 010 underscore grains underscore 01. Now we have a sequence. Take this grains asset from your outliner, drag and drop it into your sequencer, press the little plus button, add a track. You need to add a Niagara component zero. Under the Niagara component zero, you need to add another track, Niagara system life cycle. Now you have a red bar. If we play this, everything is going to be black. That's because we need a light. Press this plus button, add a rect light and roll that off to the side and press play again. The simulation we rendered out of Houdini is 24 frames per second. So just set your sequencer to 24 frames per second. Right click the red line on the system lifecycle, go to properties, age update mode and set it to desired age. This just means that whenever you run your timeline forward, the simulation will run forward up until that point and then stop. If you play the simulation, you'll notice that it looks absolutely <laughs> insane. This is because of the motion blur in Unreal Engine. To get around that, we're going to use the post process volume. This lives under visual effects, post process volume. In the details panel, search for infinite extent. This just makes sure that the post process volume covers the entire scene and search for motion blur. Go to the amount and enable it. Go all the way down to zero. Now when we play it, the simulation looks much more usable. Another thing we should do with our post processing volume is control our exposure. So if you search for exposure, go to min brightness, max brightness, and you set them both to one. This makes sure that your exposure doesn't auto adjust like a phone camera would, but instead it stays consistent across the entire scene wherever the camera is looking. This way you have much better control over your lighting. For example, now we know that we need to turn up the intensity of our light. So if we go on our light and we turn up the intensity, we'll be able to see our scene better. Looking at the Houdini setup, we had this really nice color attribute, but in the Unreal Engine preview, we just see this grid running across all the balls. We're going to use our color attribute to drive the emissiveness of the spheres. Make a material called M underscore emissive. Open that up, right click search for particle color, drag it into emissive color. In between here, we want a little control for the emissive strength. So we're just going to multiply particle color and we're going to right click on the B input and promote to parameter. Name this parameter emissive strength, set the default value 
to one and save to make a material instance so we can control the emissive strength that we just set and now we're going to go to the niagara system we can go to our mesh renderer and we need to make sure that enable material overrides is enabled we need to add a material override set the material as our mi underscore emissive and now everything is emissive. This is because right now particle color is not particle color that we got from Houdini. It is set in this initialized particle module and it's set to one across all channels. We don't want that. We're going to set it under particle update, add a new module, set it to scale color. This will multiply the color that we have in initialized particles. So in this case, just one, which is perfect because it's very controllable. So we're gonna scale RGB value by color want to make sure to take the particles Houdini color. And now you'll see that some particles are lighting up while others stay completely dark. This is exactly what we want. We save, we look in our scene. Yes, you might notice that right now our particles are only individually shaded and they aren't as a mass creating any shadows. So you want to click on it, go to the details panel and select cast shadow under lighting and enable that. And now we have some much crisper forms. If we want to control the color of our emissive light, we need to go back to our original material. And again, we need to multiply and we're going to multiply the particle color by a vector. So we're going to hold three and left click, right click on the vector, convert to parameter, name this emissive color and plug this into the B input, plug that further on. So it goes all the way into emissive color. Make sure the default value of your new vector is set to all ones. Find the material instance and you'll see now that we have control over emissive strength and emissive color. So we can enable these two. We're going to change the emissive color to this nice blue color. We're going to have just a little bit of green in there and then we're going to increase the emissive strength. If you're into the 3d motion design community you might find this look very familiar if you want a little bit more control over the, your particle colors you can go back to your material take the particle color plug it into base color save it then go to your material instance to set the emissive strength back down to zero and the emissive color let's set it to one on all channels let's save that and then go back to our niagara system in our niagara system under scale color we can then go to scale mode and set it to RGBA linear color curve and you'll see we get this color gradient which is very similar to when you ramp something in Houdini. So we want to base this ramp on the Houdini color so we need to get this arrow. We need to make a float from vector. The vector needs to be the Houdini color. These bottom tabs are opacity so you want to make sure that those are all set to one and the top are your colors. So you can double click up here in the bar to add another color and we can change this to let's say a blue and this could be Pink, and this a lighter blue and we can roll these around so you'll see that this workflow is very similar to the workflow in houdini for my final render though i'm gonna go back to the other look you can see here how i achieved a very similar look to before by adjusting this gradient and then in my material instance turning the emissive strength back up to three i added a few extra lights to my scene so i just took this light over here and duplicated it rotated it and placed it over here. I did the same except on top. I'm going to open back up my sequence. I'm going to create a new camera to help me line up my camera nicely. I'm going to use the grid overlay feature. So it's up here in the top right corner. You just go grid three by three. We just move the camera. If you want to have the camera move faster or slower, you can go up here to camera speed and lower it, or you can hold down right mouse button and scroll your scroll wheel down or up. So I like this framing. I'm going to disable the grid on your camera actor. Make sure that you go to draw debug slash focus plane. Just enable that and check that your manual focus distance is set so that the focus plane intersects with your simulation then disable it again and you have a focused camera i've increased the strength of my light coming from the right side and now to get some bounce lighting i'm just going to add in a q and i will go out of my camera view drag it into position underneath my simulation and then i'm pressing r on my keyboard to be able to scale it up and now you'll see we get a little bit of bounce lighting in this area that wasn't there before we're now going to set up our render setting go to window cinematics movie render queue add a job on the green button select your level sequence we're going to set our settings under unsaved config 
add an anti-aliasing, add game overrides, console variables. Under anti-aliasing, set the temporal sample count to 8, check override anti-aliasing, and set the engine warm-up count to 12. Console variables is a big topic and I'm not going to cover it in depth here, but just know that these settings increase the quality of your render compared to your viewport. Now we can save this preset up here, save as preset, you can name it whatever you want. Save, accept, you can find your output path by pressing it right here under output and it'll pop up. Press render low. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. The project files are available on Gumroad for free with the code UERender.